Hey guys, and welcome to an exciting time for people who are fans of Crusader Kings 2. Tuesday the 13th of November, Paradox Interactive will be releasing their new DLC, Holy Fury. And thanks to them, I've managed to get my hands on the DLC just a little bit earlier to show you guys some of the new features. And today we're going to look at possibly the feature I'm most excited for, because you guys probably know that I've used... This game has taken hundreds of thousands of hours away from me, and I'm sure for many of you, it's the same. Maybe not thousands, but maybe hundreds of hours potentially away from you. People love the game, especially with all the mods and stuff. But this new feature is going to make this game even more replayable than it already is. And the game is ridiculously replayable, but the new feature is going to make it replayable for even more years to come. It's... It's kind of crazy how much this is going to add to the game. At least I feel. Not everyone's going to feel the same way. So I wanted to show you guys it, go for the details and how it can work. I think they've done it a really nice way. It should fit for most people how they'd want to do it. And that is the features of the Shattered World and Randomized World. These two features are going to do two slightly different things to allow you guys to play the game however you want and they've given you the features and rules set in it to do it how you would like it so it should hopefully make everyone happy hopefully it, it depends on what you want now i will also be doing a main series on the channel in holy fury very soon so keep an eye on that it will be in a part of the map that has been given a bit of a facelift uh, just a just a little just a little hint there. I'm sure you guys probably wouldn't have noticed, but yes. So first off, we're going to look at the shattered world, and then we'll look at the randomized world. The randomized world one I think is awesome. That's actually probably my favorite one, but we'll look at that second. So first, let's look at this. Then, when you click click upon the shattered world button, you will be shown these settings, and there are quite a few settings here, so you can get it exactly how you would want it because when it comes to these types of features here everyone has a different idea of how they they would want to see it how they want it to be done and i think they've done a nice way to make it so everyone should hopefully be happy so if we have a quick look at the start here you have an independent count will be generated for every county so the game will separate the world into separate counts or you could go a random count and each desert duchy will be assigned the duke title all other counts will be made vassal so you can have the place separated into all its dukedoms but then each duke will have counts underneath him or you could go one ruler will be generated per de jure duchy so one man will control every duchy in the world personally for me i think i'm going to go for independent counts i like the idea of it being completely separated down to just one county each after that you can go consolidate casebelli determines whether or not or for how long Characters will be provided with a special County Conquest CB designed to speed up the early game. So yes, yeah, so of course, it, it does exactly what it says there. It means you'll be able to conquer all the people around you at the very beginning of the game. Now, some people might want this just for 25 years. You know, for the 25 years of the start of the game, everyone can kind of conquer each other. It allows nations to form a bit quicker, but not too long. You know, after 25 years, it will stop, and those nations that are left are going to have to continue playing from there. Or you can make it for a hundred years, give people a lot of time to build up a nation, or make it a permanent thing, if that's what you'd like. You think, well, I think you should be able to do that from the entire start off. Or you can disable it completely. You feel, eh, you know what, I want to do it the traditional way, I want to try and grow slowly. This might give, obviously, some advantages to different religions, because I'm sure, I think, remember correctly, some religions have some different CBs and stuff. Uh, maybe maybe cultures as well. I think it's mostly religions, though. So this could give an advantage to some different types of people around the world. So do be careful, but you can do that if you'd like. So I think that's a really nice feature. We're actually we're going to put it at 25 years because I want to put some of the religions at a disadvantage. Then we have the Great Conquerors. I really like this feature. They didn't have to put this in, but they did. Determines how the game will set up Great Conquerors. A Great Conqueror is a randomly selected AI ruler given boosted stats, a bloodline, a big army, and access to an invasion type CB for the duration of their lifetime. Great Conquerors will not spawn close together, 
nor next to a player. So if you want like a, a challenging nation to rise up, this could be a good one to have. Obviously, you can choose how many, up to four, um, up to eight, up to 12. Or if you don't like the idea at all, maybe some of you think, no, I don't want that. I just want, I want to see how it just generates naturally. You could disable it completely. I actually like the idea of a great conqueror, so we're going to make it eight. I always enjoy like when the, you know, the Mongols appear or the Turks and stuff. So I actually kind of like the great conqueror thing. So we're going to make it up to eight. Uh, initial succession determines how the game will handle initial succession laws after the game starts. Succession laws can be changed normally. So you could default no change. Succession laws will be how they are at default. Or you can make everything primogeniture. So you can make everyone primogeniture around the whole world. And even tells you what the rules are there. Gavel kind, elective gavel kind, elective seniority, ultimogeniture, uh, tanistry, or yeah, default. I'm going to go with gavel kind. I think it's kind of nice to have gavel kind at the beginning when everyone's just one count. And then like, they kind of grow and they separate, grow, separate. I kind of like to see that sometimes. No, it's not for everyone. But that's why the rule is here. Then we've got female ruler percentages. So you could change however you want. If you want, if you think, no, we don't want any female rules at the beginning, you can go to zero. If you think you want the whole world to begin as female rulers, you can make it 100%. <laughs> that would actually be kind of a funny idea. Start off a game, all rulers are female from the beginning. That could be kind of funny. But we're going to put it down to the natural thing. We're going to put it 10%. That's how it is at default. Uh, marriage percentage determines the chance of each generated adult ruler being married. So you can put that at 90% at the beginning, or you could put it lower, higher. We're going to put it at, we're going to keep it at 90, because uh, we're, we're just going to let people start off married and stuff. Age span determines the maximum and minimum age of generated rulers. It starts off at 12 to 64. You know, personally, for me, though, I'd put it at 100 to 0. 1? Okay, 1. Okay, 0 to 100. I would do that. Because I, I think any ruler could be any age, but obviously there is a, a price maybe to be paid here. If you did that, some rulers might start off at 90 or 100 and then die very quickly with no heirs and their whole dynasty has gone. Or if you play as them, it's game over. So I could definitely see why someone wouldn't want to do that. That's why I expect they put the default at you know 12 to 64. But actually, oh my, you, I just had an idea. You could put this at zero. You could have just babies ruling the entire world so you or you could have old people you know, everyone's a hundred um <laughs> that could be problematic though but obviously yes um but you can make this however you want we're actually going to put it at zero i actually want to see how that looks we're gonna have everyone be babies number of children they're babies um what's the max we can have 10 children to begin with we're gonna put it at zero so there you go so you can make this as realistic or as silly as you want and i think that's the really nice thing about this um cultures then so determines where and which cultures will be spread across the map. We could keep it historical. So county cultures are unchanged from history. So, you know, wherever the cultures are right now, they would stay as this. These would be the cultures. So, yeah. And if I remember correctly, when I've tested it, the portraits do move as well. So obviously if there are you know French people, you know, somewhere else. They will have those pictures. Uh, on the randomized world, at least, I've tried that out. Uh, we're going to keep it. We're going to put it to random. Individual cultures and their groups will be kept together, but will appear in random locations on the map. So that will just randomize the cultures. You can do full random, but this will also include the original and evolutionary forms of a culture, such as Norse and Swedish. So I don't like the idea of that. I'm just going to put it at random. Then we're going to have religions. We can keep that at historical. So the historical religions are as they should be. We could go random religions individual county religions and their groups will be kept together but will appear in random locations on the map most heresies and special religions such as the aztec religion are not included or you can go full random this will include heresies and special religions such as aztec religion are included i'm gonna go full random i like the idea of the heresies being included so you could have like you know christianity but then a lot of heresies about as well that could be kind of fun uh, religion features determines whether religions will work historically or with randomized features. So you can keep the features historical, you can make them random, so it will completely change what they are. If not, religious descriptions and their effects might not correlate. 
we're going to put it historical because I think we're going to keep the normal religion. We'll just randomize where they are, but we'll keep with their historical themes because then we know them quite well. Culture and religion names. Determines whether culture and religion names are left historical or randomized. We can completely change the names. You can make it completely random names and make your own world in history. Now, I'm not going to do that here for our shattered world. We will do it though for randomized world so you can see how that works. I think for randomized world, that's a really cool idea. We're going to keep it on historical though. Holding slots. Determines the number of holding slots each county will have. So this means you can set it however you want. We can keep it historical, random. So everyone has a random, you know, advantage or disadvantage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because we're doing um, Shattered World and one county, I'm going to put it on random, I think. That could be kind of fun. Holding types determines which holding types are present in the game. So you can make it uh, historical, make it feudal, tribal, nomadic, tribal and nomadic, or historical. We're going to keep that on historical. Technology, change the technology in terms of distribution of technology in the world. We can keep that historical. We can change that to random or flat. We're going to do, for because all the counties, we're going to separate into counties. I like the idea of that being flat, so everyone starts off the same. Title names, determines whether names of the titles um, should be random or not. Random, so we can keep it on his default, so it's a, how it should be. Or random, no duchies. Kingdoms and empires will be assigned random names. Or we can do random all. Uh, duchies, kingdoms, and empires will be assigned random names. Note that names might sometimes repeat when using this option. We're just going to go random, no duchies. Uh, de jure kingdoms and empires determines what de jure kingdoms and empires will exist. We can go for historical ones. We can go random or no empires or no kingdoms. We're actually going to go random de jure kingdoms and empires. I like the idea of that. Uh, de jure kingdom size. Um, it starts off at 3 to 10. And de jure empire size is 3 to 5. We're going to keep them as they are, and those are all the rules for Shattered World. You see, there's a lot of things to mess about with here. You don't have to go with babies like I have, but I'm just trying it out just for fun. But you can literally try it however you want. This is going to make it ridiculously replayable, and we shall generate. And we'll see what our Shattered World will look like. Where the babies run the world, at least from the beginning of the game. After that, it will change. And we can see here, all the counties have now been released. If you want to reset the settings, you can just click this button. If you want to see religions, you can click on this. But that's when you do random religion names. You can see all the different religions. It's kind of a useful thing there. But we don't have that for this. So we can see, look at this. All these counties are separate. If we click here, we go. Another kid, more kids, kids, kids everywhere. And if we have a quick look at the religions, look at that. <laughs> So, if you want a random religious world, you can do it like this. Look at that, Hellenic. Look at the Hellenic religion. It's pretty big. Germanic in Africa. Uh, sorry, in Italy. What am I talking about? Africa. <laughs> it's in Italy. I was looking at African here, I think. The Zunis, though, looking pretty good. We've got the Bon in Britain. I like the fact that it's only in Britain. Like, it's nowhere. Is it actually, is it here? Yes, there's a little bit of Bon there at the end of Brittany. But it's mostly just all in the area of Great Britain, which is pretty interesting. I like that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like the way they've done that. You've got Hindu. You've got a bit of Kafir. Catholics are tiny. But you've got like the Lollards, um, Kafars. There's the Monophysites. There's Iconoclasts, Orthodox, Romavar. So it could allow things to be complete. Can be complete. Look at this Tengri. Oh my. <laughs> so it could make things completely different. Uh, cultures, okay, so cultures, obviously, we've interest in Frankish over here. So you can see here they do look uh, Frankish when it comes to their pictures. Uh, Bosnians over here, Christians. I oh, say so you don't, you can keep it historical. This is just to show you an example of how it could look. Norwegians in the north of Africa, uh, Russians down here in Africa. Um, Hungarians over here, and it really allows you to make your own world. If you're, like, you do it this random, you can really create your own world and own stories. Like the Dutch are up here, and the Polish, uh, Bohemians, Irish, a little bit of Irish, quite a bit of Portuguese, or oh, the Catalan, 
uh, Castilian just below them. It, it does seem to like keep them quite close together, the ones that might be. So I always find that kind of interesting how it does that. But yeah, this could be a great way for you to kind of make your own story, your own world. Tell a different story. Maybe you have Africans up here controlling the whole of Great Britain or something. Or, you know, Chinese controlling the whole of Italy. And that kind of allows you to create your own story, your own world, and say why this happened and why it's like that. You can say it in your head, potentially. So I really like the way it's done. But this is just one example. Now we're going to look at the randomized worlds. I'll click government types there. Uh, government... And you can see here, there's no nomadics. It's all tribal right now. And everyone else seems to be feudal. No Icta. Was there no Sunni? Oh, there's a bit of nomadic here. So you've got a bit of nomadic in Africa. But actually, most of it's very feudal. That's really different. Was there no Sunni? There was actually no Sunni. Okay. There's no um, Sunni or Shia anywhere. Which really surprises me, actually. Okay. Huh. A little bit of Jewish down here. That actually really surprised me, but a lot of Slavic over here. But okay, let's now look at the randomized world. Remember, this shadow, this is not how your world will look. It's however you want it to look. You can make the cultures of religion historical exactly in their position. It's up to you. But let's look at the randomized world button. Now, this one's my favorite. This one, I think, is great. Max number of counties. This is going to completely randomize your entire world completely not just shatter it you get whole new nations whole new countries and possibly whole new stories depending on the settings you put so maximum county summons the maximum number of counties each ruler can hold personally most will hold a low number of counties even if this is high so how many do we want maybe one person to have we're going to put it onto four it starts off at five but we'll just put it on four uh number of dukes determines how common dukes are you can put it at normal you can put this at many or none, or few. So you can choose how many dukes there might be throughout the world. We're going to put it normal. Number of kings is the same as well. We're going to put it normal. Number of empires, you can start off at few, but I'm going to put that normal as well. So you can see in the world there'll be this number of different ones. You could put empires, you know, at many. So you could have many empires appearing in your game and maybe put, you know, kings down, maybe, no, maybe put dukes down to few. So that way you have lots of big nations at the start or you could do the opposite way of many dukes but no kings and no emperors and have lots of smaller places you can choose how to design this as you want so as i said before it just it allows everyone to get what they would want then we have down here some interesting rules holy roman empire generates a realm somewhere in the world based upon the holy roman empire the realm will be large and religiously uniform but heavily decentralized and elective so there you go you could turn this off so there is nothing like the holy roman empire or you could turn it on and the holy roman empire nation will likely appear i think if you have empires at few it won't always appear because there's a few other things down here as well you got a byzantine empire generates a realm somewhere in the world based upon the byzantine empire now it does not mean these places will be named the holy roman empire or byzantine empire it means they will have the same setup as those two empires the realm will be large and centralized, with vice royalty laws in effect. The emperor will start off with de jure duchy titles to be handed out as vice royalties. We'll put that on as well. Merchant republics generates a number of merchant republics throughout the world. Merchant republics will only spawn if there are enough coastal cities to accommodate them. So if you want some merchant, you could turn this off. No merchant republics at all, or keep it on. Of course we're going to keep it on. Minor theocracies generates a small portion of theocracies. Theocracies will only spawn if there are enough temples to accommodate them. We'll keep that on as well. Random bloodlines. Now, if you don't know what bloodline is, a bloodline is a special, shall we say, family. You know, maybe a very famous man. All the people who've come after him that have his blood will be considered part of his bloodline. They can get extra features or a bonus or something like that. And that's where it adds in some random bloodlines. If you turn this off, obviously, there will not be any bloodlines. You can create a bloodline as you play. But if you play in historical game where you start in different, you know, uh, scenarios, there will be historical bloodlines. But if you do random bloodlines, it will actually generate some new random bloodlines, which I think is really cool. It means you're going to have some very famous people in your game from the beginning, and you can make their own. You can make your own story up for them. This this feature here, I think, has so much potential. It's crazy. Random artifacts it generates a number of special 
artifacts spread across the world. I like that. Of course, everyone wants some artifacts, some treasure to find. More pagans increases the amount of pagans in the world. Note that in rare cases, the pagan can be cut off from being assigned more land. So if you want more pagans than normal, you can click that maybe. So maybe most people have to start to reform their religion potentially. We're not going to click that. I want to keep it as it normally would be. Uh, female ruler percentages, we have this back, of course. We're going to keep that 10%. Uh, marriage percentage, we're going to keep at 90. Age span, we're going to put it at normal. Um, actually, I'm going to put it at 0 to 100. There we go. Uh, number of children, 1 to 3, we'll keep it at that. Cultures. So, this obviously, this can get a bit weird. We're actually going to change this rules from last time, because this is how maybe I would want to do a random world to make a completely random idea. And obviously, the game does not randomize the land. The actual land mass will stay the European picture like this. You know, you're not going to get an island, or, you know, over here or something like that. It keeps the same land mass, so it won't do that, but it does change a lot of things. So cultures. We're going to have the cultures as random. We're going to have random cultures, I think. Yeah, random cultures throughout the world. Religion we're going to have as full random, I think. Yeah, we're going to put that as full random. Religious features are going to be random. There's going to be a completely new world I'm going to create here. This is what I want. Cultures and religious names we're going to put as random as well. Holding slots, random. Same. These are all the these rules are the same as last time. For Shad World, these are all the same. Holding types are going to put as feudal heavy balanced. Uh, we're going to put it balanced. Technology, we're going to put it random as well. Title names, random, no duchies. De jure kingdoms and empires will be random. Um, de jure kingdom size and de jure empire size will keep it as it is. So these are the same rules as kind of with shattered world. But if we generate now, you can see how this is different. I've changed some of the rules. We're making it completely random here. This is going to be a whole new world, a whole new story. Let's do it. Let's see what happens to this world. It's a whole new world. A perfect Disney song to sing. Please load quick so I can stop singing. And this is what we're given. So this is the independent realms right now. You can see the whole world has completely changed. And if we look down here, we have, what is this? The Bengazian, Bengazian Empire. So we've got the Bengazian Empire down here in kind of the east of Africa. It looks pretty big, pretty large. We have another one over here, the Divine Placentian Empire. Okay. So you can see here you get some very weird names. Then we've got like Essex up here. So you're going to get some names that you notice. The Kingdom of Terentia. Um, you're going to get some weird names. Obviously, you can put it as like historical names and stuff. But if you put random names, you're going to get these random new places. Now, obviously, I kept the duchies the same. But when it comes to like, the kingdoms and empires, I made them random. I love to see what the game makes because some can be really fun. So you, you could then start anywhere. You could start here in this new empire down here, um, as we can see here. We'll have a quick look at some things in a second. We're going to look at religions. So these are random religions. So these are completely new and different named religions. And here in the British Isles, we have the followers of Ultia. So the followers of Ultia. Let's have a quick look here. The Ultiest faith is one founded upon fear. Their clergy hold terrifying masses when they recite passages from the unsung tale. Telling of how the free strangers will crack the world open like an egg. Despite followers constantly fearing for their souls, they find brief solace in the stories told about their main deity, the world tree. These stories are often told, often told, and only the most brave elders dare recite them in public. Oh, they're not often told, sorry. So there you go, you now get completely rela random religions and they have their own stories. The high god is the world tree, the evil god name is the free strangers, and the scriptures are the unsung tale. So this allows you to create your own little world. You can create your own story. Like the British Isles has their own religion. You could be like, okay, they, you, maybe there was one big tree in the British Isles and people worshipped it or something, and that's why it spread out here. But then obviously we go down to other places like uh, the school of Wadi Mutsa. Look at that. That is a big religion right now. 
So if we click on this, we can have a quick look. Um, it's actually a heresy of the Ozergite. So where is the Ozergite? I did not see the Ozergite. Is it actually smaller? Is it a smaller religion? Is it over here? I'm not sure what... Oh, no, that one's different. The o Ozergite. Okay, so this is the Ozergite religion. So this is actually the main religion. And this one down here, which actually looks bigger, is a heresy of this religion from the Russian area. So if we have a quick look at that. Cold Knights are cherished by followers of the Wazi, Wadi, Wadi Muzai. I'm terrible at just reading normal historical cultures and religions and words, let alone these random names, um, who hold the belief that the, the touch of the first warrior is as icy as the deepest winter. As the Chronicles of Reality makes no mention of this, priests of the parent faith deem such rituals heretical and inspired by the gospel of the ravenous hunger. So the high god is the first warrior, the evil god is the ravenous hunger, and the scriptures, the chronicles of reality. So you can see here there's some so much fun to be had here. You can make your own stories, you know, your own ideas. And it's not just like the religions in one empire, the religion is in many places around them as well. And obviously the cultures, I've done random cultures, they're spread out. I think we had a you know, down here we've got you know, these different people. No Africans here in Africa, apparently. No Af What's in India, then? Okay, we've got Africans in India. <laughs> Look at that. And it does seem to try and keep them together. You can see here there's lots of uh, different cultures. We'll quick look at cultures. Yeah, you can see different cultures. They try and keep them together. And these cultures have... I've done random names as well. So you can see here we've got random names for these cultures. So you can see we've got some new ones like Leo Donisians. There's no British here. So it's kind of nice. It means you can, like I say, create your own world, your own story. So you can make it completely random, like I have, and of these whole new worlds, these different laws, these different rules. Or, or of course, you can keep things very historical. You can keep things very historical, keep the cultures or religions exactly as they should be in the time zone you've chosen, but randomize what countries there are. So it allows everyone to really get maybe what they would want. And we're actually going to choose someone. I'm going to choose someone from the... Yeah, we're going to choose the Emperor of the Bengazian, Bengazian Empire. And we're going to jump right in. I do not want to do Iron Man because there's no point. We're not going to... We're not actually going to play this. But I just wanted to jump in and show you the de jure empires, maybe, and de jure kingdoms. Because we did random for that as well. I said, we're not going to go over all the different types of generating you can do. But like I say, you get the idea. You can really customize it however you want. So for someone who doesn't like this completely randomized world, not everyone's going to like that. I completely understand. You can actually then make it very historical. Just different nations are about. And make it however you want. And I think that was really nice of them to do it that way. So we can see here, oh, we can look at the government types as well. So we've got government types. You've got nomadics. Here in like Italy and down here in the Balkans. That's really interesting. You've got feudal up here, but then tribal is mad. Look at the tribals. Oh my. Tribal is massive. You got Icta over here in the west, uh, feudal over here in the east and the north. And that's, uh, yeah, you've got some nomadics over here in India and Tibet. And this this can be completely different. I've done some different ones where I had like nomadics were the whole of like India and Persia. And so there was like a massive nomadic mashup over here. And you had like feudals over here. So like all the nomads that kind of crushed upon the feudal societies. It was really interesting. And if we go on De Jure Kingdoms, you can see we've got these different kingdoms here with their own names and ideas that you can try and form up. Then we have the different empires and you see look, it's very different it's not like the kingdoms are set up like they would normally with different names no the kingdoms are their own completely just made up things and we go empires you can see look we've got the chi chinen empire and um, the british of it's just the british isles <laughs> of course it is of course it is. So you're going to get some things that obviously look very similar. The Bengazian Empire, of course, over here. So you can try and unite some of the people into your own empire, the ones that are created from this randomness. And I really like this. I really like it. It just opens up the door for just more replayability. 
than probably you could ever expect from this game. So I hope you guys enjoyed. That was just a quick look. I say quick look. This video was actually quite long. This was just a look at the new feature of the Shattered World and, of course, the Randomized World, where you guys can create exactly how you want it. Actually, this is an empire as well. Empress Chiyuta Radzio. And actually, I should probably show you guys the bloodlines, because we did put the bloodlines as random. So we can show you how that works. So if we go through, we should be able to find them after a bit. I wish there was a title for this. Here we go, Bloodlines. So in the historical context, you will have obviously famous people being bloodlines, like Charlemagne, of course. He's going to be part of a bloodline. But in this randomized world, we chose randomized bloodlines. We have new people, like May Duran the Noble. If we click that, we got this guy over here, Duran the Noble. He has his own little bloodline. The challenges that Duran... Dora overcame when his rise to power was so great the very blood that courses through his veins are considered legendary. So he gets monthly prestige, vassal opinion, personal combat skill, periodically attracts the servitude of great warriors, and this will be inherited by his children. They are all part of this blood line. And so you're going to get randomized ones from the very beginning. So that's kind of nice. Uh, we got, let's see if we can find one that sounds kind of cool. Sultan Hamdan the Lionheart, Emperor Kwig of the Divine Placentian Empire, uh, Emperor Galezo of the Bengazian Empire. Oh, actually, our guy is his own bloodline. I, I guess that makes sense. He is a ruler of an empire in this randomized world. It's not a surprise, maybe, that he's going to be part of a bloodline, is it? A great conqueror of fame and legend. With sword in hand, he would let no one stand in his way. So there you go. So, there you guys have it. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you're looking forward to the DLC. And I hope you guys will try out the random world or the shattered world. And I hope it's, a, I hope it's what you guys wanted. I think it's really well done. I think it's really nice. It opens the door for just endless possibilities. But you can do it how you want. May it be historical or completely fabricated fantasy worlds. Psst. Psst. Hey. Hey, for you guys, you guys that have made it here all the way to the end of the video, I've got a nice little uh, thing that I found that I didn't show off for the rest of the video, but it's something that I noticed, and it made me laugh. If we have a quick look at the cultures here, you know, you got, you got, uh, what was it, random, full random, historical, you know, and those are the three choices, but that's actually not it, guys. You have the animal kingdoms in a world dominated by animals can mankind still prevail what what is this you're probably asking well i will show you exactly what this is actually we're going to keep religion we're going to put things historical because i think i didn't really get to show that so we'll actually put this all to historical so you guys see the the different one here but culture is going to be animal kingdoms and let's just generate this right up um, it was kind of a funny thing. I was just clicking through the cultures. I don't know why I was, and I just happened to come across it at one point, and I just laughed my head off. So we can see here, this is a, a randomized world once again. Um, you've got, you know, oh, no, no, we want religions. You know, you've got the Catholics, of course, you know. Uh, if you want it like this, it can start off just like this. But obviously, the world is completely random with uh, some different places. If we have a quick look around for any particular empire, any particular empires? Okay, we got the Celtic Empire over here. So we could look at cultures there, and we got the Bretons. Yeah, see, this is why I don't like to do. Uh, <laughs> you may, <laughs> you may have noticed some, uh, some, some interesting things just from cultures there. But yes, this is what's happened, guys. We have the horses, King Brunt of Cheyenne Stan, and there we go. We have horses, but that's not it, guys. That is not it. There are elephants ruling the world. There are whatever the hell these are. Dragons that rule in Spain or whatever it's now called. Fire Sen. That actually suits the dragon people actually. And um, there are still places that are ruled by people. So you do have people. But you also have dogs here in Egypt. The Egyptian dogs of course. The Shia dogs of old of course. Uh, we have ducks over here in the Middle East of course as you all know. The ducks of the east, as they're known. We got the polar bears of the north. King John of Jonia. 
Okay, the name just made me... Just, I didn't expect that, actually. King John of John here. So you could actually have, you know... Oh, oh my... I have not seen that. It's a baby polar bear. That is so darn cute. But yeah, so if you want something a little bit different, maybe something a bit fantasy, you know, you don't have to do this. I said this is all things you can choose to do or not. But if you want something a bit fantasy kind of related, like a world where you have like talking animals as well as people and go on that, this is exactly for you. So it really does offer something for a lot of people. Look at this. Look at this empire. There's two empires right next to each other. I'm sure they probably do not get along. I don't see any other animals though right now, but I'm sure there are some other animals here and there. Obviously, I've seen cats before in a different one. So you can get some other animals, but obviously it's a random world. You're going to get random stuff. I thought I'd just show, throw that in there at the end of the video as a little present to you guys that made it all the way to the end. But like I say, it's all optional. It's all however you, how you want it. And that's why I like these new features. Not only do this add so much replayability, but they also allow you to do it how you want it. So yeah, hope you enjoy, guys. Tell me in the comment section below, what do you think about these new features? How are you going to make your random new world? What do you think about it? I'd love to obviously know what you guys think in the comment section, of course. And keep an eye out for my main series on the channel to go with Holy Fury. I'm looking forward to it. And until next time, see ya.